job. God is good and shows up in awesome ways. That's right. That's right. So a reminder, if you are, um, have been coming here now for a bit and you want to find out more about our welcome dinner, please do see Eric or Blake and Gina here on the way out. We would love to have you be a part of that welcome dinner. Um, talk to Eric. He has all the answers. There you go. Okay. So, um, have my. Oh, yes. Okay. Also, we want to make sure we get, we get your email address. If you are interested in seeing Dale Bruner, who Eric mentioned, um, we have an all church email list. If you're not on that list, we want to make sure that you are on that list. And so please make sure you give your email address also in one of the little cards to Eric as well to get you on that list. Uh, we send out our all church emails pretty regularly, and it's just updates with what we're doing. No junk mail, no ads, like that kind of stuff. Okay. I've been praying for Sharice Henry, who is Regina, a long-time a member of our church's uh, daughter, and we went and saw her uh, on Thursday, um, and her heart stopped for 30 minutes last week. She's in her mid-30s. She's two young children. Um, so we want to keep her in our prayers. I want to ask us to be praying for them. This family is in a very... Uh, delicate situation. We're going to pray that God's really going to touch her. So please join me in that. Lord, we just want to lift up Sharice um, and Regina to you and ask that you would bring healing, that you would, that you would be in the midst of the situation, that your spirit would bring healing to that body and restoration to her heart and her mind and her spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all for doing that with me for a moment. We've been praying for that a bunch this week. Okay. Um, this week... In response to what we talked about last week, which was really that declaration when God gives us the, the authority or a word to declare over our lives to bring life in the midst of, of death or, or of loss or of um, brokenness, um, we come this morning to uh, the question of doubt in our faith. What do we do when we have doubt? Um, a lot of us feel like we're a bad believer or we're afraid to doubt. Or to, or to be honest about having doubts about things. So I want to address that today a bit. Uh, so let's turn to John chapter 20 together in our scripture. John chapter 20, verses 24 through 31. You're, in, you're encouraged to use those red Bibles in front of you. They're free to use. Um, we do ask that you don't write in them. Um, so the next person can, you know, have them to look at. Um, John 20, verses 24 through 31. This is after Jesus has come back out of the grave. He's alive. And um, we pick up in verse 24. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, Put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side. I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. You know, we see the powerful revelation that it's through faith that we have life. And we're called to a decision of faith, to a life of faith in Christ. 
But we get a very, a very specific picture of how the Lord addresses our doubts. Let's pray together. We thank you for this morning, Lord, for time to worship, for time to celebrate, for time to be together. Lord, I thank you for this church family and for the things that you're doing here right now. Lord, I pray that this text would be special for us this morning, that you would equip us and guide us as we address the topic of doubt and of seeking when things don't always go the way that we think that they should. We ask that you would guide us in understanding this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I don't know if many of you are aware, but this past Thursday was a very important day. It was the National Day of Prayer. Um, very, very special. Very, very um, important for us to join together in, in prayer to the Lord for our nation. Um, I know that not everyone's a, a fan of President Trump, and I get that, but he wrote a really um, strong statement about the National Day of Prayer, and I want to just read um, a, little, a little bit of that. He said, Religion is not merely an intellectual exercise, but also a practical one that demands action in the world. You know, I, I thought that was really good. That was really good. Um, I'm, not a, I'm not saying to believe on any candidates. I'm just saying I thought that was a really powerful statement um, and a really good statement about the National Day of Prayer. Um, We sent out an email um, last week, earlier part of the week, about the National Day of Prayer and gathering here on, on Thursday morning. We had a good gathering here. If you did not get that email, again, I want to get your email address. So fill a card out and give it to Eric, and we'll get you on our email address um, for the all church emails that I send out to you. Um, and so we had a, a small gathering here, and I, I noticed as I walked around that not many Christians were saying to each other, hey, happy National Day of Prayer. I noticed that it was not really well known. I mean, how many of us knew that that was happening on Thursday, National Day of Prayer? A few of us? Now, in light of that, there was also something else going on on Thursday. For those of you who don't know, it was May the 4th, National Star Wars Day, where people say to each other, May the 4th be with you. So we have some pictures here from that that I found online. Um, Star Wars enthusiasts were out in force on Thursday celebrating National Star Wars Day. You can't laugh at these. They're supposed to be funny. There's our, our guy, uh, Han Solo. Next one there. This is that one. Did you get the last one that I sent you from Chris? So there's, there's our buddy, Chris Manigault, sent me that to open the morning for me. Chris is a huge Star Wars fan. And I, uh, I noticed that as I went around that Star Wars fans were celebrating with each other. Um, Chris actually put me on to May the 4th being National Star Wars Day. And so I, I have a Star Wars shirt that I got from Target, which I think is very cool. And I... I, I not really realizing what I was doing. I wore that to Costco about 8 o'clock at night on May the 4th. And you would not believe how many Star Wars fans shop at Costco at about 8 o'clock <laughs> at night. I had people walking up, giving me high fives, nice shirt, dude. That's awesome, man. Yeah, Star Wars Day. I had like six, hey, may the 4th be with you comments. Like six in Costco. What? Insensitive? Excessive. Yes. Yes. It was. In fact, one guy, I'm even like, I, I, I said, hey, he was, he, was, he was on gear. I'm like, I'm like, hey, may the fourth be with you. And he goes, and also with you. They stole that from the church. We say peace be with you and also with you. Remember? It's like, whoa. 
And as I was high-fiving the guys working in Costco and made the fourth thing people, I thought to myself, what if we as Christians could celebrate like this? Right? What if we as Christians could celebrate our Christian faith like the Star Wars folks who are fanatical and excessive celebrate Star Wars Day. I actually have quite a, a I see actually a lot, of, a lot of parallels with Star Wars and the Christian faith, dark side, light side, all that kind of stuff. Um, but it left me, me wondering, you know, like, what if, what if we could celebrate the same way? You know, and as we come together this morning, we look at something that's very important for every believer, and that is the issue of doubt and unbelief in our Christian walk. You know, if we're honest about it, most of us struggle with doubt or unbelief. Has anyone here ever had doubt or unbelief in your Christian walk? You gotta tell the, the, the prince gotta tell the hand to go up. If that's you. You know, in the world, we need to be wise and discerning. We, we learn wisdom and discernment, or we get taken advantage of. You know, I, um, my first month here, I had a guy come to me into the office, and he said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a cameraman in the industry down on my luck. My dad's got a bunch of health conditions. If you could only give me $400, it would really help me out a lot, and I'll pay you back in two weeks. I was brand new, didn't, hadn't, didn't have a spectrum for this. I said, of course, and I went and got him the money out of, my, out of my account, and I gave it to him. And he came back the next weekend, the next Sunday, waited after church and said, hey, if you could give me $100 more, that would really help me out a lot, and I'll pay you back in two weeks. I said, of course. Went and got the money, came back, and in two weeks, for some reason, he wasn't there. And the phone number didn't work. And I realized that sometimes people mislead you or take advantage of you or scam you to get something they want. You know, there's so many ways people can even go after your money. I got a, I got a, um, uh, a text from Bank of America where it said, this is Bank of America, your, your account is trying to be hacked. Please quickly log in and, and log into your account. Give us all your information so we can verify you as the rightful owner of the account. Now, thankfully, I was in a hurry and didn't want to type everything into my phone, so I called them instead, really out of laziness, more than really being smart. And I realized, lo and behold, that was a fake alert. They were trying to get my information, Blake, and use it for bad purposes. So we've got to be wise and discerning when it comes to how we operate in the world. And we're told in the Word that we need to walk by faith, believing that what God says is true until our belief matches our experience. And I don't know about you, but oftentimes, especially when we're newer in our faith, we can pray something we don't see what we ask for happen, and we can begin, or there's a temptation to get mad at God. God, if you really loved me, you would have given me that girl for my wife. Right? If you really loved me, I would have gotten an A in that class instead of a C, and now I can't go on to do whatever. God, if you're real, give me that winning lottery ticket. And we, and we make these statements. And we begin to try to put God into a box and say, only if you're real would you do X, Y, or Z for me. You know, there are a lot of things that lead us to question or doubt God. A spiritual defeat, sin, sickness, Suffering, seeing injustice, especially in the church, economic problems, family issues, national calamity, world religion classes, can all lead us to question our faith and the reality of God. Some folks even question if they're really saved. 
They've said yes to Christ, but they're just not sure if they're really saved. I, I always thought that when you go to seminary, that's where all the super Christians hung out. You know, so, I mean, because clearly if they're going to seminary, they've got to be super Christians, right? I remember meeting a guy in the library at one point, and he said, he said I, I just had the most horrible thing happen. In, in one of the classes, one of the teachers, the professors said that the virgin birth might not have happened, and if it didn't happen, then I, then I must not be a Christian. And he actually, I saw the guy, he actually left his faith because some professor in, who wrote some silly book claimed something that wasn't biblical. Which again goes back to us knowing our authority. Knowing our authority by faith. Saying God's word is our truth, therefore, we can take that and that can influence what we believe. We're not looking away from God's word, we're looking to God's word for our answers. I mean, think about it for a moment. If I went to a national Star Wars convention and held up a sign that said... Vader is not Luke's father. Imagine the outrage. <laughs> I would be beaten and jumped and pummeled with big stormtrooper helmets. And we as Christians should have a radar that is the same. So that when some person, no matter how many PhDs he or she has after them, if they say, oh, well, this is the truth, and it's not the word, we should be able to call false. And our faith is substantiated. No real Star Wars fan would ever say Vader wasn't Luke's father because they all know that he was. They know the story. They know the truth. And they throw parties for it every year on May the 4th. And for some reason, even in the church, people have gone away from the word and validated it with things like experiences or some a distinguished person says some silly thing and they say, oh, in that case, we're going to go away from God's word and side with foolishness. And even if you don't like some parts of God's word, the minute that we begin to say, well, some of it's not true, is the minute that we get rid of having absolute truth. And God has given us his word so that we could have truth and the truth could set us free to know him and live with him and walk out the supernatural invitation that he gives us in Christ as fueled by the Holy Spirit. So I ask you, what doubts are you struggling with this morning? You know, 2 Timothy 3.16 tells us the Scripture is actually God-breathed, like God actually spoke it Himself through the hands that wrote it down. And I want to pose to you this morning the reality that God's actually okay with your doubts. Some folks are like, what? Oh my gosh, you're, you're insane. I don't think I am. Here's Thomas who walked with Christ throughout his whole ministry. He saw the miracles. He saw the things. He was a part of all the teachings. He was always there. And yet, I'm sure he imagined, okay, I was off getting the groceries and all of the disciples got over in the side room and they were like, nope, nope, let's tell everybody that he's alive even though he's dead. Right? That's why Thomas is thinking that to himself. You, you ever overthink things a little bit too much? You know? You got this whole narrative going on that's not really there? So here's Thomas. No, no, these guys are making up stuff so they can tell everybody that Christ is alive, but I don't believe it. I gotta put my finger in the holes. Then I'll know. No one's gonna make a sucker out of me, says Thomas. And Jesus, when he shows up, doesn't say, Shame on you, Thomas, you bad boy. He reveals himself. Because Thomas, even though he has doubts, is still looking for the Lord. He didn't go away. He didn't run back to Capernaum and find some local dive bar and, you know, run away from everything. He kept looking for the Lord. He kept spending time with those that knew him looking for the Lord, even though he had a lot of doubts. And I would say to you, we learn from this scripture that if we have doubts, we've got to go to God with them. 
You know, I know so many folks that say, oh, I, I don't like this thing. And so they go and they go look at other religions or New Age or they go to psychics. There's so many places you can run to to find comfort and answers that aren't the Lord. And I've seen a lot of people actually start off well and finish poorly because they don't know where to turn when they have struggles or doubts about the faith. And I want to say we've got to know God's word. We really do. We've got to know, we've got to be willing to defer to God's word when there are questions. If we're not willing, there's, we're, it's, it's like we're at sea, lost without a, a, a desire to find the light. I mean, if I'm, if I'm at sea and I'm swimming around, I want to find the lighthouse. I don't want to find a shark. We've got to be looking for something. Jesus came in love to Thomas and provided the answer when Thomas sought the answer in the right place. John 20, 29 says, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. There's a question of, can you be a Christian, a real Christ follower, and still have doubt? And my answer to you is yes. We have to ask God to help us with our unbelief. Do we know who Lee Strobel is? Lee Strobel is kind of a well-known Christian author, some of us. No? The Case for Christ? Okay. There's a book called The Case for Christ. Um, came out of Willow Creek. And he says that our unbelief can be like getting an immunization. To help your body fight off a future disease, doctors inject you with a small amount of that very disease so your body builds up antibodies that will battle off the disease if it ever threatens you, your body is actually stronger for the experience. When we're infected with some doubts that we work through with God and find answers for, we become stronger Christians. I would say to you that doubt cannot hurt you, but unresolved doubt can. Anyone in here married? Some of you are. I know. That. I would say to you that a disagreement that goes unresolved can cause chaos and problems. I speak from marriage experience here. But an issue that is worked through together where a solution is found can create strength. Some of you? Okay. God invites us where we struggle or where we have unbelief or doubt or question Him to work through it with Him. Especially in the Word, but also in prayer. Jeremiah 29, 13 and 14 says, You will seek Me and find Me when you seek Me with all your heart. I will be found by you. God wants us to look. Matthew 7, we read this last week, 7 through 8. The scripture keeps coming up for me again and again. The Lord says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, open. Hold that scripture there for me, Joel. Verse 8, tell me. Is this say some people? A few? The select chosen ones? Everyone. It's a promise that if we seek, if we ask, if we go to Him, He will give us the answer. There's a famous theologian who one day came upon a boy flying a kite. And he was flying the kite and the, the clouds were low and the the, the mist was there, and he couldn't see the kite up in the sky, just a big string. And he was flying his kite, and the theologian stopped and asked the small boy, how do you really know the kite is there? And he replied, I can feel the tug of it. Later, when the theologian was interviewed by a prominent Christian publication, they asked him, 
How do you know that Christ is real? How do you know that your faith is in the real thing? And he said, simply because I can feel the tug of it. If we're honest, if we're open, we can feel the Lord working. We know that He's real by how He reveals Himself. But we have to be willing to see it. I have counseled people that have, that God has encountered incredibly and they will reason it away. We have to be willing to see that it's God. You know, there's a story that I heard, I've shared here before, of a, of a man who was at his home and a great flood is coming and, and a, he's, he's standing in front of his house and a car drives up and the, car, and the driver says, hey, hop in, hop in my car. There's a flood is coming. I'm going to drive you to safety. And the man says, no, no, go on, go on. God's going to save me. And the water comes and more water comes and he's up to, his, he's up to, to about here, up, up past his knees and the boat guy says, hop in my boat. I'm going to boat you to safety. We're going boating to safety. Floating, whatever it would be. Sea traveling to safety. No, no, he says, go, go, go. And he gets up on his roof and the water is coming and coming and a helicopter comes and drops a rope ladder right at his feet. He says, hop on the rope ladder. I'll chopper you to safety. And he throws the rope ladder. He goes, no, no, take your chopper out of here. God's going to save me. And the water comes and the water comes over the house and he drowns. Bad story so far. It's not a real story. It's a story. And the man goes up to heaven. And he says, God, what happened? Why didn't you save me? And God says, I sent a car, I sent a boat, and I sent a chopper. You wouldn't take the lift. We've got to be open and willing to receive from God as we question and I'm not encouraging you to question, but I'm encouraging us in our faith to be smart about it. If we don't understand something, we go to God with it. We're not stronger for following blindly all the time. He wants partnership in relationship, not a robot. If that were the case, he would push the button, we'd love you, Jesus, every time. But we get to choose to worship. We get to choose to pray. We get to choose to trust. Or not. That's the beauty of this life. It's a great aspect of life with God here on earth. Here we choose. Here we, we're given that opportunity. In heaven, it's just paradise. And every choice is paradise. Every choice is great. There's no, there's no other option. But here we get to choose. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone, everyone who asks receives. And he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Promise of God. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that your word brings life and truth and revelation. Lord, might we be so committed to your truth, to your word, as those radical Star Wars fans are to Star Wars. Lord, thank you that you walk with us when we question what you're doing sometimes. Let us to be people of faith. Lord, let us be people of faith that trust you and turn to you with questions that we have along the way. Help us, Lord, always to look to you and to trust your word in light of our experience until our experience matches your word. The very definition of faith in Hebrews 11.1. 1. And Lord, you are so good and it is such a joy to walk with you, to know your word, to be influenced by it, and to grow in it, 
and to go from spiritual infants to mature people who have great impact on the world because you are our God and we are your children. Yeah, we thank you, Lord, right now. Lord, as we come in into our final time of worship, if there, is, if there is anyone here today that has not yet said yes to you as Lord and Savior, may today be our day for yes. If there is some doubt or some hesitation that the, the world has planted a seed in us in that would keep us from saying yes to you as Savior, Lord, may today be the day that we step forward in faith and say yes. Come right up here to the front and receive Christ the Savior, if that's you today. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for talking to us, for leading us, for giving us your word, your promises, your abundant grace and faithfulness, your resurrection power available to us in the Holy Spirit. Gratefully, Lord, we worship you today. Thank you, Lord, for what you've shown us in your word. We pray this gratefully in Jesus' name. Amen. Help us spread the message. Click on the donate button below or go to shermanoakspc.org forward slash donate. Thank you.